and take out your yellow music sheet and join in singing with one voice. out to every land shine the light of Christ for all to see may the lives of those we touch sing praise to God above let us sing we'll sing with one voice we'll pass the word along with one voice, bring justice to the world. And with all the angels, we'll spread the good news of God. With all power and glory, the word of God shall reign. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone, O Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. A great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and of your blessings I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way and have caused many to falter by your instruction. You have made void the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of the hosts. I therefore have made you contemptible and base before all your people. Since you do not keep my ways, but show in your decisions, have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break faith with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers? 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, were we gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her child? With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you we proclaim to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly, that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received not a human word, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 
brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries, lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor at synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father, You have but one Father in heaven. Do not be called Master. You have but one Master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the things that's easy to miss in this gospel reading is that Jesus loves the scribes and the Pharisees. So often with the gospels as we become increasingly familiar with them and hopefully find ourselves aligning with Jesus, or at least we think we're we're on team Jesus, we can hear and see how they're often seen challenging and questioning Jesus. For over a month now, every one of our Sunday Gospels has been demonstrating this. And St. Matthew hasn't minced words describing them, describing the Jewish leaders going off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus. So it's obvious that they're the protagonists. They're part of team, not Jesus. And most of all the interactions that are captured in Scripture. And because he is truth, Jesus doesn't back away from their challenges. He doesn't soft pedal or spin things to get along, whether he's calling out their mistakes to their faces or pointing out their bad example as something to avoid, as he does in today's gospel. There's no sugarcoating going on when he says, the scribes and the Pharisees do not follow their example, for they preach, but they do not practice. As he launches into this sermon, where he's warning of the dangers of hypocrisy. Because these individuals so often oppose Jesus and we hear these kind of responses, we know Jesus is incredibly frustrated and he's justifiably angry with them. But we can't forget why he spends as much time as he does with these debates. The reason he's having such a reaction to them is because he loves them. And when you love someone and you know them, and you can see what they can become, you see the potential that exists that they're not living up to, and nothing you seem to say or do seems to be getting through to them, it can be maddening. Because at some point, at some time in the lives of the scribes and the Pharisees, their lives were consumed with love for God. They studied the scriptures, they had mourned what had happened to God's chosen people. They knew their story and their history backwards and forwards how God had set them apart to be the light to all the nations, not in some arrogant way that made them better than everyone else, but so that the world would see them as different, as remarkable, not because of anything they themselves had done, but what God had done for them and with them. And that the other nations and peoples would be drawn to want to come to know and discover who this Lord God was themselves, only to discover that they they too were his people made and fashioned by his own creative hand. But time and again, the Israelites would break their covenant with God, causing them to fail that mission. Usually that happens when they were looking at the other nations and peoples and thinking they were missing something, not being like them, ending up ignoring their chosen status and just wanting to be like everyone else. 
And we get one brief glimpse of an example of that in that first reading from the prophet Malachi, which was written about 500 years before the birth of Christ. The Jewish people had been conquered, exiled, and now they were returned home to Jerusalem. God had once again demonstrated his love and saved his people. And the people's response was, mm. the Jewish priests who were supposed to be leading the people in right worship had abused their roles, and in short, they were cheating God by swapping out the sacrifices that the people were offering for what was unacceptable, keeping the better stuff for themselves. And the people were watching this and followed their awful example in all the disordered ways they were living their lives, which resulted in just further catastrophes for the Jewish people. So fast forward to the time of Jesus, and yes, the Jews had returned to their chosen land, sort of, as they were ultimately under Roman control and had a puppet installed as the king of Israel. They had their temple, sort of, as this wasn't the original temple that had housed the Ark of the Covenant and was filled with God's very presence. Because of unfaithfulness and sin, the Ark was lost. The temple had been destroyed. So this temple was a rebuilt one that was only a shadow of the glorious original. And while it was the place where the Jews could come to offer worship and the, the necessary sacrifices, it was also a reminder of what they lost and what they were longing for as they were awaiting the Messiah, the one who would be a true son of David and replace their fake king. And they anticipated when that happened, the true temple's glory would come back. God's very presence would come back and would return and all would be set right. So the scribes and the Pharisees had gotten maniacally focused on getting things right. If the failures of their ancestors had resulted in so much destruction, they were gonna be the ones to fix it, which on the surface is a good intention and it's a noble desire. So they look at all the commandments and the laws and the rituals that God had prescribed and they decide they're gonna follow them better than had ever been done before. In fact, they were going to go above and beyond. They were going to be the all-star students. And they start to think, more is better. So if God said we're, to, we're fast on this particular day, we're going to add a second or a third one to that. God had given prescriptions about the Sabbath and Sabbath rest. We're going to be militant and watching and looking for the slightest of infractions according to the strictest of their own interpretations. They start to make more and more demands and put greater expectations on the people. And with that, there's been a shift where at one time the scribes and Pharisees' lives had been consumed with love of God, but now it becomes something else. They enjoyed being in charge. They liked being the ones telling others what to do and blaming their failures for why things had still not been set right on them. They didn't even re recognize how subtly things had entered in and changed them. They went from wanting God to save them and looking for his return to believing that they, that would be based and determined on what they did and got others to do. Falling for the same lie of the devil that had been put to Adam and Eve millennia earlier to be gods themselves. And to add further insult, having it all layered and covered in the trappings and the externals of their religious practices, sacred rituals from God himself that had been passed down from their ancestors for generations was now being manipulated. That's why Jesus runs so hot at the scribes and the Pharisees. There's so much that they do know. They obviously have a lot of passion and energy, but it's all misdirected. It's been all co-opted. Last Sunday's gospel, Jesus had reminded them of the Shema, which was the heart of the Torah, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And one of the points that a Catholic theologian had made was without love, the law is cold, and without love, or without law, love is just mere emotion. So Jesus isn't dismissing the laws or the commandments. He makes that very clear today. Do and observe all things, but don't follow their example. 
He's frustrated that what had become of them, and there's such a lopsided approach to things, how cold they've become. Pope St. Leo the Great had this, this beautiful quote that came to mind. He said, you must learn to find God's heart in sacred scriptures, to hear God's heartbeat. The leaders don't realize, they don't hear God's heartbeat anymore, which is why they don't see love incarnate in Jesus right before them. This gospel is here for us not to just get the narrative straight in our minds and to celebrate we're with the right team and to just shake our heads as we hear about those rascally Pharisees and scribes and chief priests. That balance between law and love has always been difficult to maintain. The fatal error for the Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests is that they begin to believe it's all in their control, it's in their power. And that's why Jesus gets so upset. Think about it, he doesn't spend this much time or energy trying to win over the Romans, who are in the end his executioners. Not because he doesn't care or love them either, but because they hadn't received God's law and covenant. That's not gonna excuse their actions or what they do but it does help explain what Jesus means when he says to those whom much has been given, much is required. For these leaders who say they wanted salvation, they wanted a Messiah, they wanted freedom, that they had so many of the externals correct and were failing so miserably is what angers Jesus, but out of deep love and deep disappointment. For all of us who have heard and learned God's word, it's essential for us to to find God's heart and to hear his heartbeat, humbly receiving his word and responding to it and letting it transform us so that we can help transform the world. For us to reject the pride and the arrogance and the sin of this world that often pushes people to one extreme or the other. Recently, I'm just reading a, a book of homilies from Pope Benedict XVI, and the story he shared has been on my mind for weeks, and it just kept coming to mind with this gospel. It's a story of how this great French author converted to Catholicism. It was early in the 20th century in the period between the world wars. Pope Benedict recounts that this young man was living just as man lives today, with the concessions that he makes for himself no better and no worse, shackled to pleasures that are against God's will, so that on the one hand, he needs them in order to make life bearable and yet at the same time finds the same life unbearable after all. He looks for some way of escaping and strikes up relationships here and there. Finally, he goes to this great theologian, but it remains just an academic discussion, theoretical hair splitting that doesn't make any headway. He becomes acquainted with these two great philosophers who refer him to a Polish Dominican priest. And he goes to him and describes to him this fragmented life. And the priest says to him, and do you approve of living this way? No, of course not. You would like to live differently then, you regret it. Yes. And then something unexpected happens. The priest says to him, kneel down, I absolve you. And this worldly author, this famous and seemingly comfortable in every way writer observes, he says, then I noticed deep down, I had always waited for this moment, had always been waiting for there to be someone, sometime who would say to me, kneel down, I absolve you. I went back home and I was not a different man. No, I had finally become myself again. The Pharisees, the scribes and the religious leaders miss the numerous opportunities that Jesus puts before them to become themselves again. But praise God, you and I still have time. Time for us to actualize the potential that Jesus sees in every one of us who tries to follow him, to recognize our struggles with God's law and his commandments, to humble ourselves, to ask for his help, ask for his healing and the sacrament of reconciliation and experiencing his love and his mercy and to find our true selves.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, a life for the world to come. May our prayers be directed toward God's will and for his mercy. For our church and all church leaders, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercession of Our Lady of Lords, for healing and strength for all those who suffer in illness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with financial and material hardship, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace to come in all places in the world affected by war and violence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, Maria Augusti, Patricia DeSantis, Mary Sharkey, Nicole Colombo, and for all whom we remember in our parish book of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the internal rest of our beloved deceased in our All Souls Novena of Masses, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those that we keep in the silence of our hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing Blessed and Beloved, which is found on your yellow music sheet.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise and glory in this name. Our good and all May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all that you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, that revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with all the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end, we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, and for our sake be handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. 
celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, to graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue, who've died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Father, who art in heaven, Amen. hallowed be thy name, Amen. thy kingdom come, Amen. thy will be done, Amen. on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our heavenly bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and it's not temptation. Deliver us, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. So offer each other a sign of peace.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remember daylight savings time is ending and you don't have to set your clocks back one hour because every clock you own will automatically set back one hour. But the ones that don't set back automatically one hour, you have to set those back. Um, on Saturday, December 9th, uh, we're looking forward to a concert with our choir, our children's choir and our adult choir, which will take place immediately after mass on Saturday, December 9th. So, Mark your calendars for that event. And this is the anniversary weekend of our parish. We give thanks for Our Lady of Lourdes Parish, 109 years. Um, thank you for all your support. Uh, we pray for all of our beloved loved ones, our deceased of our parish this month especially. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is in. Please open your hymnal to number 783 and join in singing Immaculate Mary. Mm -hmm. 